Today is Monday, uh, November 27th, and we are reading from, from 2 Peter chapter 2. And Peter is jumping right into talking about false teachers and the destruction that they can cause. And uh, so I want to talk about that for a second. That that's, that's actually a highlight from, from this chapter because that's the focus. But so in false teaching in Peter's day, as he was writing this, is actually a little bit different than our focus here in today's world. Um, you know, because back in those days, it was more of a, of a struggle for what truth was right. And, and Peter was helping them keep in line with the, the truth. And, uh, but, but in today's false teaching, in today's world, in our culture especially, we are suspicious of truth at all. And, and so it might be a thing that whatever truth is good for me, that's my truth but it may not be the truth for you. And, and so your truth is whatever you put together and, and that's your truth and I'm okay with that. So that's a false teaching because God's word is truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him and his truth. So we know that tr truth is absolute. And, and we knew, know that also that that God's word is that truth. And, and so here Peter is warning. He is warning uh, the people uh, back then and also now though uh, to be aware of false teaching around us and to keep in, in line with listening to God's word and being focused on what he is teaching us. And so the false teachers, their destruction, it's, it's all sin as Peter says. And sin is something that grows from the seeds of selfishness and, and we, we allow it to grow within our hearts and it's, it's terrible. It, it takes root and it grows unless we kill it. And so uh, he talks about that in, in verse 3 uh, of greed. And then in verse 14, uh, the desires of the flesh. And he goes into a lot of detail about that in, in, in those verses of how the desires of the flesh so entangle us. So when we get so entangled in our selfishness that we bec become corrupt and so entangled together, verse four through 10, he talks about that the God basically, he doesn't spare us. And uh, he talks about that he didn't even spare the angels that, that had, when they sinned. He is done. He, he does not spare us. And so I want to I wanna take heed of that, that God is just, He is sovereign, and He is holy. So moving right from that, what do we learn about God? First of all, we can learn that God is full of grace and love, and, but He is holy and righteous, and He must punish sin. We can see that right there in verse verse 9. He says, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. So he is gracious, he is loving, but he is also just and he must punish sin. What do we learn about people? We are full of selfishness. Uh, we seek our own pleasure, uh, feeding your lust, taking advantage of, of others and their mis mishaps, and um, doing that to build ourselves up. I don't know if you're guilty of that, but uh, sometimes I find myself in, in the midst of some of those things. And I have to remind myself, James, you gotta, you gotta keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. Turn away from that, repent. And so people easily get tangled back into the sin uh, of, of the time, trying to escape, trying to escape the pain of this broken world. And it's kind of a cycle that we try to escape it. And so, so we sin more and, and then we feel broken and then we sin more and then we feel broken and we feel that pain. And it's a cycle 
trying to escape that, that terrible feeling. Verse 20, um, verse 20, he says, If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are again entangled it and are overcome, they are worse off than they were at the beginning. And it's kind of like that with our, with our cycle. It's like bungee cords. We, we try to, to escape with, with different things. Maybe it's through drugs and alcohol, or maybe it's through uh, success in our jobs, or, or even going to church just, for, just to be there and, and uh, just for the wrong reasons, maybe in the wrong relationships. Whatever it is that you, you do, we all have those bungee cord kind of situations that we try to escape, but it snaps it right back into the brokenness. And just as he says here that they're again t- entangled and then they're worse off. And we feel worse when we are snapped right back into that. The pain is so great from the, the corruption of sin. So what are some next steps that you can take? Be reminded um, by actually uh, Proverbs uh, verse 22 that um, we, we want to um, we want to remember that sin is terrible. And he quotes Proverbs here in verse 22. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow is washed, uh, that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. That's nasty. And it's that same thing when we return to our sin. We know the freedom that Jesus gave us. We know what he has freed us from, and we return to that and start wallowing in it again. So be reminded of that and look to Jesus and remember that I need to repent. I need to surrender each day to him. And so with that, we have to seek a a trusted accountability to help us to not return to that vomit as a dog returns or to return wallowing in the nastiness. So we want to seek trusted accountability to help us, someone to walk with us, and also to daily feed from God's Word, not just once a week, not just, uh, not just coming to church and hearing His Word, but uh, immersing ourselves in studying His Word and listening to Him daily. And then also another good thing to do for you in the next step in helping to uh, keep from corruption is to find someone who has a good has good fruit that they're producing because the Holy Spirit is producing in them and, and you can see that and hang out with that person as much as possible. Build a relationship with that person that you want to be more like, that is acting more like Jesus. And when we surround ourselves with people that are acting like Jesus and have the Holy Spirit within them, then uh, we're going to start to, that's going to rub off on us. And so I want to encourage you in those things, taking those next steps to listening, to obeying, to repenting, and and becoming more like Jesus. So I want to dialogue with you. And what are your thoughts on this, on this chapter? And so uh, I'm going to read here. And if you've already read the chapter, you're sent. I'm going to read 2 Peter chapter 2. But there were also false teachers among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who bought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their depraved conduct and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with fabricated stories. Their condemnation has been long hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare even the angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them in chains of darkness to be held for judgment, if He did not spare the ancient world when He brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if He condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, by burning them to ashes and made them the, an example of what is going to happen to the, the ungodly. And if he rescued Lot 
a righteous man who was distressed by the depraved conduct of the lawlessness? For that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then, how, uh, then the Lord knows how to rescue the godly from trials and to hold the unrighteous for punishment on the day of judgment. This is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desires of the flesh and despise authority. Bold and arrogant, they are not afraid to heap abuse on celestial beings. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not heap abuse on such beings when bringing judgment on, on them from the Lord. But these people blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like unreasoning animals, creatures of in instinct, born only to be caught and destroyed. And like animals, they too will perish. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasures is to carouse in broad daylight. Their blots and blemishes, re reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. With eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed, an accursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, son of Bezer, who loved the wages of wickedness. But he was a rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey, an animal without speech, who spoke a human voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These people are springs without water and mists driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved for them, for they mouth empty boastful words by appealing to the lustful desires of the flesh. They entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. They promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of the depravity. For people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, are again entangled in it and are overcome, they are worse off than the end, at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them to not have known the way of righteousness than to known, have known it and then turned their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Of them, the Proverbs are true. A dog returns to its vomit, and a sow that is washed returns to her wallowing in the mud. I want to pray with you. Father, I thank you for these words of encouragement and uh, of concern to help us to, to remember, to keep on guard, to be uh, repentant when we, uh, when we waver, and to not return to our sin uh, as, as Proverbs says. But when we do, to look to you, to receive your forgiveness and to press on, listening to your word, being guided by your Holy Spirit. So Father, I pray that you help us to take next steps. Take it, uh, those steps that we may be more like Jesus and who is leading us on to be uh, leaders and to obey your commands to make disciples who make disciples and multiplying until the world has heard the truth of Jesus. Father, we love you and we thank you uh, for your goodness. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, until we see you again, you are sent.